Celebrity chefs carry great influence. We look to them for advice, cooking tips, and ingredient explanations. And since we aspire to be experts just like them, does that extend to trying recommended ingredients like stale bread and pickle brine? Absolutely! Along with these other underutilized ingredients. Giada De Laurentiis has a foot in nearly every culinary door, from television and restaurants to cookbooks and kitchen product lines. The De Laurentiis recipe vault is studded with eclectic influences, produce-driven California plates, light and healthy recipes, and indulgent desserts all play a part. But cheese graters, Roma tomatoes, and all things Italian cuisine are central to her culinary outlook. Parmesan cheese, however, is an obvious cornerstone ingredient to her repertoire. Salty cheese chunks with engraved Parmigiano rinds have received plenty of airtime on De Laurentiis' numerous Food Network shows. But after the prized meaty center is all used up, De Laurentiis doesn't throw the rinds away. Instead, she saves them in a plastic bag and stores them in the freezer for later use. The waxy rind imparts a buttery richness that melts into slow-cooked broths, soups, and tomato sauces, leaving simmering spoonfuls teeming with complex umami flavor. So the next time you grate your way through a Parmesan cheese wedge, don't toss the rind. Instead, start a freezer collection to make a magic potion of your own. Bottoms up. Made from ground-up sesame seeds, tahini paste imparts a seductive creaminess, upfront nuttiness, and pleasant, bitter undertone to the beloved healthy chickpea spread, aka hummus. But hummus barely scratches the tahini surface. Canadian chef and Top Chef Canada host Eden Grinchpan can't name an ingredient she loves more, and her tahini passion might just change the Middle Eastern condiments' U.S. trajectory. Full of praise for the sesame paste, Grinch Pan has developed recipes for savory and sweet dishes, making this not just a favorite ingredient, but an incredibly versatile one as well. Just like any other ingredient, no two tahini pastes will taste the same. Ethiopian, Israeli, and Lebanese sesame seeds all impart a unique regional flavor that influences the final tahini product. Effusive bitterness can overpower tahini's nuanced qualities, so finding a smooth paste with a pleasantly light bitter flavor is often a good quality indicator. Anchovies are highly polarizing, but Iron Chef Bobby Flay won't let popular opinion shake his fondness for the salty fish. Anchovies are a Flay pantry staple. So much so, he compares their salt-forward taste and effortless flavor-boosting capabilities to the timelessly fashionable bacon. A personal pantry tour unveils rows of dried chilies, spices, and canned tomatoes. But his standout secret weapon hides in a small glass jar packed with oil. Anchovies are often misjudged, leaving pizza eaters who find the small fillets garnishing their wood-fired pies skeptical. Flay admits to using anchovies as an undercover flavor enhancer all the time, employing the tiny fish to bolster dynamic umami flavor in many dishes. An episode of Bobby and Giada in Italy does just that. Flay helps cook up a Roman anchovy butter pasta, utilizing the powerhouse fish to add extra richness. <laughs> Simmering pots full of rusty orange-red tomato sauce have plenty of uses, but Rachel Ray has a go-to tomato product for all her saucy needs that doesn't get enough love, at least not here in the U.S. On The Rachel Ray Show, the chef explains that passata is made from fresh, ripe tomatoes that are ground and put into a bottle. The main difference between tomato passata and tomato sauce lies in its uncooked nature. Although some cooks claim passata can also consist of cooked and pureed tomatoes, most agree that it stands out as being uncooked. It's also important to note that no added seasonings or vegetables are mixed into passata's tomato base. If Ray is cooking with tomato products, odds are tomato passata is involved. Unlike many store-bought tomato sauces, Ray points out that passata doesn't contain any added sugar. 
Recipes such as her garlicky tomato sauce incorporate passata as the standalone tomato ingredient, while her you won't be single for long penny a la vodka accentuates the puree's naturally sweet juiciness in conjunction with more toothsome canned tomatoes. Self-proclaimed cocktail queen and back-to-basics culinarian Ina Garten surpasses celebrity chef status and heads straight to royal tears. With over 3 million Instagram followers thirsty for Garten's exhaustive cooking tips, word travels fast when she advocates for an indispensable pantry item collection. A few years ago, Garten unveiled one staple she can't live without — mustard. But she doesn't halt her condiment infatuation at classic French Dijon mustard. Garten raises the bar, vouching for whole grain mustard's unique texture. The creaminess of Dijon and the texture of whole grain mustard create a magical emulsion with an iconic mustardy bite. Her crispy chicken thighs with mustard sauce stay true to this method, incorporating both mustards into one creamy sauce and relying on the whole grain mustard to add a sassy surprise pop with every bite. Pardon me, would you have any gray poupon? But of course. Jose Andres is both a chef and a humanitarian. But feeding people is at the forefront of all culinary outreach avenues. As the founder of World Central Kitchen, a nonprofit organization that provides food disaster relief, Andres knows a thing or two about the impact of a freshly cooked meal. Wasting any food at all goes against his benevolent spirit. So Andres is sharing a passionate petition to save day-old bread chunks and use their aged character to create culinary magic. Andres shared one of his favorite ways to cook with stale bread, inspired by his Spanish upbringing. Migas is a typical Spanish dish made from stale bread, lots of olive oil, and onion. Andres shared his twist on the classic, featuring migas with paprika-studded chorizo and sweet grapes. Stale bread chunks work to chorizo's oily advantage, soaking up all the flavorful, greasy bits. Andres also recommends using up extra bread in soups, which can resuscitate day-old bread with a little help from flavorful broth. A Top Chef contestant, restaurateur, author, and James Beard Award nominee barely scratches the surface of Kwam Anwachi's accomplishments. Meanwhile, when it comes to sharing his culinary talents, Anwachi's Trinidadian, Nigerian, Jamaican, and Louisianan heritage is a driving force. One of his favorite ingredients touches on his Nigerian roots and takes the shape of a small cube. Magi cubes are a common seasoning in West Africa and a cornerstone ingredient in Anwuachi's go-to comfort foods. He is so passionate about this flavor bomb ingredient that he imported tubs of Magi cubes from Nigeria when he opened his DC restaurant Kith & Kin. Although it is no longer open, his impactful culinary footprint and homage to traditional Nigerian flavors forever changed the restaurant world. Anwuachi has since introduced the mighty Magi Cube to countless people, and it's only a matter of time before the U.S. catches on to the spirited Unami building block. Alex Gornicelli made headlines showing off her high-end kitchen to fans, and never has a celebrity chef been so relatable. Amidst the impressive gadgets and decor, she has an entire shelf dedicated to sauerkraut and pickles. With such a vast pickle collection, you can bet the chef makes a point of using up leftover brine. She doesn't limit its use to cocktails or consuming it plain for numerous health benefits, but incorporates the brine into upcycled recipe components. Cornichelli has shared an easy recipe for salad vinaigrette, using leftover brine for an added touch of acid and salt. For her Door of the Fridge vinaigrette, she combines one part each of pickle juice and balsamic vinegar, three parts olive oil, and a spoonful of Dijon mustard for thickness. Gornichelli also notes that she uses the brine to re-pickle new vegetables or to add a splash of salt and acid to marinades. Pepitas are so much more than just a salad garnish, and Patty Hinnich, host of Patty's Mexican Table on PBS, shares just how transformational they can be. The seeds are a foundational ingredient in many Mexican dishes, including salsas, moles, soups, and even drinks. Not only are pepitas incredibly nutritious, they're packed with antioxidants, fiber, and healthy fats, but blending them creates an incredibly creamy texture. 
Much like nut-based milk, the seed's oils emulsify with liquids, causing the sauce to lighten in color and develop an unctuous texture that lingers on the tongue. Pepitas are small, but in numbers can transform almost any aromatic base into a thick and luxurious sauce. Hinnich adds pepitas to her mole poblano in addition to peanuts, almonds, and raisins. Four types of chilies, onions, tomatoes, and tomatillos forge the iconic mole paste base. Chef and former Top Chef contestant Richard Blaze is known for his molecular creations and firmly believes everyone should have a hefty duck fat supply, claiming that anything cooked in duck fat has a flavor that you can't get from oil or clarified butter. Blaze recommends either roasting a duck and saving the rendered fat or buying it from the grocery store. Either way, duck fat has been compared to liquid gold. And there's a bonus here, it can be stored in the fridge for weeks or in the freezer for months. Duck confit is a classic French preparation, and Blaze won't argue against cooking duck legs in their own fat. His San Diego restaurant, Juniper and Ivy, features a rotating menu, including items such as a whole roast duck and even a maple cream tart with a crust made with duck fat. Born in Seoul, Korea and raised in Los Angeles, California, Roy Choi grew up with diverse food cultures. Choi's endeavors stretch beyond his fusion tacos, and his fans know that he is always ready to use ingredients in new and unexpected ways. Case in point, in 2018, Choi incorporated one of his favorite beverages, kombucha, into remarkable dining room plates at his Chinatown restaurant, Chego. Choi commonly integrates fermented foods into recipes, so it wasn't that far-fetched to splash some kombucha in a dish. He adds the fermented tea to salad dressings, cold noodles, and even sorbets, but recommends the novice kombucha drinker try deglazing a pan of caramelized pan drippings with the beverage. Alice Waters is the brilliant mind behind Chez Panisse, but her impact echoes way beyond the award-winning restaurant's square footage. For over five decades, Waters has built a food empire and calls green garlic one of her favorite springtime farmer's market finds. Green garlic is essentially immature garlic, pulled from the ground before the bulbs can dry out. A pleasant, mild garlic flavor sets this early bird crop apart from its older siblings. Waters has written that she discovered its range of flavors following a fleeting season of premature harvests yielding young and delicious green garlic. It's a pivotal ingredient in Chez Panisse's potato soup. Sleep well, Miss Lucy. The garlic will protect you. New York Times food reporter and cookbook author Priya Krishna knows her way around Indian spices. The Dallas, Texas native published Indian-ish in 2019, a food-forward familial tribute exploring the intersection of Indian influence in American society. Krishna includes only one chicken recipe in her most recent cookbook and credits the lone dish's success to a single ingredient, amchur. Krishna explains that amchur is made from unripe mangoes that are dried out in the sun and then processed into an indispensable seasoning powder. She raves about Amchur's acidic boost, which instantly transforms a neutral protein like chicken breast. Not only does it add a bright flavor, but it also helps to tenderize the meat. She recommends subbing lime or lemon juice for Amchur's enticing acidic flavor, or mixing the tart mango powder into softened butter to spread on sweet summer grilled corn. Nigella Lawson's cooking philosophy is designed to fulfill and satisfy the cook, not just those who dine. In 2014, an admirer wrote to the chef asking about a very particular UK ingredient, cold-pressed rapeseed oil. It's made by taking small batches of rapeseed and crushing them with a stone to extract oil. The temperature cannot exceed around 80 degrees Fahrenheit to preserve the natural flavor in the final oil product. BBC Good Food calls cold-pressed rapeseed oil British olive oil. With the seed's natural pepperiness left intact, Lawson recommends using the nutty, mustardy oil as you would extra virgin olive oil in a vinaigrette and drizzled on vegetables. 
Award-winning chef and famous chopped host Aron Sanchez is on a mission to preserve an unlikely portion of a highly esteemed herb. According to Sanchez, cilantro is one of his favorite ingredients, but it is only complete when both the leaves and the stems make the final cut. Why? The bulk of cilantro's zesty flavor lives in the stems. Sanchez recommends saving all vegetable scraps from a week's worth of cooking and simmering the leftover bits with water to create a homemade vegetable stock. Throw it in the freezer and use the flavorful broth for soups and sauces. In addition to soft corn tortillas, expert meat placement, and exclusive white onion usage, Sanchez claims the secret to an elite taco is using the entirety of a cilantro bunch. There is no need for tedious leaf stripping. Grab a handful, run a sharp knife through the herbaceous bundle, and sprinkle with reckless abandon. Andrea Nguyen from Viet World Kitchen is a tofu connoisseur, and although her knowledge of Asian food is vast, she has a special place in her culinary heart for tofu. Nguyen calls silken tofu an underutilized ingredient in many parts of the world. According to Nguyen, unlike firm tofu, its texture is soft and pudding-like. Thanks to its production, which uses extra-rich soy milk, silken tofu has a unique fatty flavor and creamy consistency that's incredibly satisfying. With such a delicate yet luscious texture, silken tofu can present itself in many different ways. It can be cooked or not, served hot or cold, or blended to amplify its natural creaminess. Nguyen recommends using it in soups, purees, and even desserts. David Chang's knack for innovation, bold statements, and challenging the status quo is the secret sauce behind his food empire's success. The New York Times coined Chang's bosom a brined and slow-cooked pork shoulder with a sweet and salty brown sugar caramelized crust, a miracle in 2012. Flashy chunks of buttery, fall-apart pork steal the show, but the samjang sauce often gets overlooked. The sauce is an essential component of the recipe, transforming the dish. The word samjang actually means a sauce for wraps, so each variation, store-bought or homemade, is unique. The two essential components are dwinjang and kuchujang. The former is a slow fermented soybean paste, and the latter is a spicy Korean red chili paste. When the two are combined and mixed with sesame oil, garlic, and honey, the delicious result is a sauce for dipping grilled or braised meats. An underrated Yemeni spice found its way onto Minnesota farmland as one of Food Network celebrity Molly Ye's essential pantry ingredients. Hawaiage, a spice blend consisting of cumin, coriander, black pepper, cardamom, turmeric, and ginger, features warm and peppery notes. The word translates to mixture in Arabic and refers to sweet and savory blends. Every Hawaiage mix is unique, as different spice ratios lend to infinite variation. For example, a blend used to flavor coffee is heavier on ginger, cardamom, cinnamon, cloves, and nutmeg, much like pumpkin spice warms trendy autumnal Starbucks cups. Ye uses it wherever she can, adding the cozy spice mix to soups, chicken pot pie, casserole bakes, and even carrot cake. When Padma Lakshmi gave fans a peek into her home kitchen, she revealed which ingredients she swears by. Lakshmi says that she stocks preserved lemons like the rest of the world stocks milk. The lemons are stored in aromatic saffron and a jealous seed-infused oil, ready to add an intense, salty lemon flavor to nearly anything. Preserved lemons are salt-cured, which removes moisture and concentrates the lemon's essential oils and juices. Lakshmi likes to chop them up and sauté them with olive oil, garlic, and lean protein, deglazing the pan with a bit of water to create a fragrant, flavor-packed sauce. Senegalese-born chef and cookbook author Pierre Chiem is introducing the world to West African flavors with passionate gusto. Thanks to Chiam, Fonio is now sold all over the country. Fonio is super nutritious and gluten-free, with a cooked texture that resembles polenta or cream of wheat, and welcomes saucy ragouts or meaty braises. Chiam pays tribute to Fonio's 5,000-year history in his cookbook, The Fonio Cookbook, an ancient grain rediscovered. But in 2017, he began promoting the ancient grain with a Fonio product of his own. 
For Marcus Samuelson, one very flavorful and brightly colored spice blend is essential to his cooking, and he always brings back an assortment of bear beret seasoning from trips to Ethiopia. The dynamic mix of chili, salt, cardamom, garlic, and ginger reflects his heritage, both Ethiopian and growing up in Sweden. Bear beret is prepared all over Ethiopia, but Samuelson only discovered its complex lure years after becoming a chef. He adds it to slow-cooked stews, fish, guacamole, and even cocktails. One of his favorite fusion dishes is adding bear beret spice to classic meatballs served with pasta, couscous, or cracked wheat. But for Samuelson, the magic comes down to experimentation. As he states himself, spices are windows into the countries they come from. Once you have good spices, you don't need much more. At first glance, herring might not scream hip and current. After all, the ingredient is rich in history and cultural tradition. But Joe Nathan argues that herring also amplifies refined restaurant plates. And for the last decade, chefs have reevaluated a traditionally resolute ingredient and embraced its experimentation. Nathan commends restaurant plates that showcase smoked herring in any and all forms. And there are a lot of them. The New York City Aquavit Annual Summer Festival has honored the underutilized fish and given us all reason to give it a chance. For the home cook, grilling, frying, or sautéing herring fillets in a generous herby butter pool are all great options. Fresh produce receives the bulk of culinary attention, but North Carolina chef Katie Button swears by a specific dried ingredient, dried mushrooms. When mushrooms are dried, their natural flavor intensifies, adding an incredible depth that not even fresh mushrooms can achieve. Having shelf-stable dried mushrooms stocked in the pantry is a great way to reduce waste while appreciating infinite possibilities. Button explains, they're reduced down to their perfect mushroom essence, so you get that back out in a really big way. Button loves to brew dried mushrooms with slow-cooked chicken stock, but a quick pulse in a spice grinder turns the umami powerhouse into a powdery seasoning for fish or meat. Innovative opportunities are limitless, and it's only a matter of time before this underutilized fungi ingredient receives the hype it deserves. Check out one of our newest videos right here! Plus, even more mashed videos about all your favorite obscure ingredients are coming soon. Subscribe to our YouTube channel and hit the bell so you don't miss a single one.